Hi everyone, it's Rick here from the Game Creators. Before we get started with my physics game update, I just want to tell you about Genguru Max. You may have heard of this if you're signed up to our newsletter. Uh, for those who haven't heard of it, it's the next generation of Genguru. It's uh, going to be released in September. We've already developed quite a large part of it and the next sections are going to be the visuals which are going to be so much better than we've got on the old Game Guru Classic. One really important thing to tell you is if you pre-order you can make some great savings if you get in early. We've got 50% off this month in February. Um, scroll down here you can see in February 50% off, March 45 and it increases in fives up to release. So normally I mean, this is pounds, you'd be paying nearly £40. You can get it for £20 in this month. Uh, what's going to be new in it? Well, we'll be doing some videos on our Game Guru YouTube channel, so you can find out there. But you've got a new UI, you've got a new character creator and behavior system. Lots of things. Read the page, find out. Anyway, let's get back to my physics game. There we go, loads and loads of balls. So, as you can see, things have moved on since our last video. I've completely changed the game in my mind as to what's going to happen with it. There's a lot of changes to run through, so let's have a look at what I've been doing. I've had to put in some comments so I don't forget anything. So I've got a new uh, value called max balls equals 200, and that's the maximum of balls in a level. Uh, so if I just change that to, let's say, 300 and run the game again, now we've got 300 balls flying down like so. You can even boost it up to a thousand, which is a bit ridiculous. Uh, there's not really enough space, but it works still. The physics engine has to create all these, and there's too many of them to fit in space, but they will, once they find space, because they're all being created at the same time. There you go. Probably need to turn that sound off. Uh, yeah, but it's a bit over the top of that. So I'll just put it down to 100. Let me just show you what I changed on the scene. You see, this is the original ball here. And I'm actually cloning the ball many, many times. So I, what I can do is I can change the size of the ball. And because it gets cloned, let's make it a bit bigger than that. So it's very obvious. Run the game. Now you can see they're much bigger. And essentially, if the green ones go into the green bucket, they disappear. And if they're red and they go in the green bucket, they get recreated. And vice versa on this side, red ones get deleted and green ones get recreated at the top. And the idea is to try and get as many of the balls, or get all of the balls, uh, into the right buckets uh, in the quickest time possible. As you can see, we're slowly getting rid of them. Also, if they fall off the bottom, they get recreated at the top. And because I made the balls a bit bigger, you can see them all nesting at the top when they've been uh, completely deleted. Oh, don't want that one in there. Well, that's too late. Wrong bucket. <laughs> so we should get there. Ah, that one might go in. It's going to fall off. Oh, it's gone in. And uh, this one, last one of the lot, should pop in. Yep. Uh, there's no check at the end. I'm just changing how the game's going to work. But I wanted to show you that. And if we make it even smaller, a little dead tiny, there we are. Sort of a whole different dynamic to the game in doing that. So that's how I've changed it. I just had code last time for one ball, and I wanted to make it a bit more interesting. So how do I do that? So I, I say this integer called max balls equals 100. That determines the maximum amount of balls. Then I have a, an array called balls, and it is a two-dimensional array, which basically has a thousand locations with two values in. Uh, the first value is sprite ID. Well, actually, sorry, there's three values, a 0, 1, and 2. The sprite ID, the colour of the ball, and whether it's hidden or showing. Uh, although I'm not actually using the hidden showing, I just turn off the ball at the moment and uh, turn its physics off so it can't move. So... This is the new data information. Let's scroll down to the next new bit. Try not to miss any. 
So I've also set physics wall bottom to zero. If I don't have that in, then because by default App Game Kit will surround the whole scene with uh, invisible sort of blockers, you see they'll all collect to the bottom and they won't fall off low enough to uh, get reset. So that's the reason that's in there. Put that back in. And I've got a time value now. So whereas before we had number of lies, well, that doesn't seem to make any sense. This is all going to be about how quickly you can clear the balls from the level. So a new variable there. So we've got this ghost of make balls. Right click on it, go to definition. And it takes us here to a new routine. And essentially what this does is it creates clones of that first sprite. If you remember this sprite here, which is called game ball, okay, I do for i equals 1 to maximum number of balls, and then I do um, a clone sprite of game ball. So that gives me an ID into Z, and I create, I set a sprite position of the new ball, because it takes the same texture, same size as the sprite uh, for this new clone. And I randomize that in the X and in the Y position of 40. So it's actually on screen. I could actually make them appear higher up, so off screen. Then I set the sprite shape, the physics on, make it rotate. All these sort of values that are important for that new ball to behave how, how I want it to. Then I put into the array that I made previously the ID, so the zero index becomes the ID of the sprite. I randomize a color and I set that into the one index in the array. Then I check what ball color I've chosen and I make sure the sprite is that color. Otherwise, you know, they're all going to look the same color or um, the wrong color. Then I set a flag in index 2 to 1 means that the sprite is on but I'm not actually using that right now but it's important to do that. So that's what that bit of code does. It makes uh, all those sprites because it's, um, it's a 4 next loop so it goes round round until max balls uh, is reached and all those balls are created. So we pop back up here. There we go. Then I set time to the Unix time so this is um, the current Unix time in seconds. Oh yeah, I didn't show you time start. So yeah, I missed something there. So time start equals get Unix time. So this is set when the level starts. And Unix time, if we press F1 on that, we get the help. It returns the current date and time in Unix time format, which is measured in seconds from the 1st of January 1970. So... That's a big number, because it's since 1970. What we can do is use a little bit of maths and say, well, when the game has started, we knew it was, you know, that's that's the beginning of the game. So we get Unix time again and subtract what the value of time start was when the game started, then time will equal the seconds uh, into the game. It'll make sense um, if we just run it again. You can see that time is counting up there. If I don't subtract the start time, you're going to see a big number. Yeah, it goes off the screen, actually. So a little bit of maths just to get the seconds of the start of the game. Uh, I've changed the loop. Uh, it used to wait until lives equals zero. Well, I've not got an end to the game yet, so I'm leaving that as is. Uh, so just do loops and the game never ends at the moment. I need to work out more about what I'm doing with the game. What else is new? Um, let's see. So down here, this is the check to see if a ball has gone off the screen. So again, we have to go through all the balls because we, we've got to check every ball. Uh, we can't just check one. And we go from I equals one to max balls. And if the Y position of the current ball, so we use i in the index, we look into that array, we get that sprite id from that array, 
and if that sprite y of that sprite is greater than 1920 then the ball has dropped off the bottom of the screen and then we call reset ball with the sprite id that we're looking at so if we go to that definition uh, this is the function sprite i so we're resetting the ball we're setting the sprite y position to minus 50 we're giving it a random x position um, i'm not increasing the force at this stage to rem that out and we're giving it a force and then we back up to where we called having checked for all the balls to be off the screen we then do a check to see if any of the balls have gone into the green and red buckets so what we do there is again we do a 4i equals 1 to max balls so we're checking every ball and we're seeing if it's hit the green left or the right cups in these two uh, checks so this is for the the green one and this is for the red one i took out the sound for the uh, the wrong ball and the wrong colour because it just gets a bit too crazy with all those sounds going off and I probably need to change the sound because it's a bit piercing all the time so as before we do the collision check with the current ID of the ball with the left cup if it is, if hit equals 1 there must be a collision between that ball and the, if you remember game collision left if we go back to the scene is this sprite here, this one here let's get the properties up there game collision left so it's not this cup it's the actual invisible sprite inside the cup because if the ball's gone in we then check there because we don't want balls disappearing as they're touching the cup uh, so we do check has it hit that if it has then was it a green ball so we check the index one uh, and it was then play the sound set the sprite x position off screen minus 20 so we just move it off screen and we turn the physics off for that sprite so it's never going to fall or do anything it won't fall off the bottom of the screen which if it did this check would reset it and then we give 100 points to the score maybe that's too much now with so many balls so we'll just give it 10 uh, then we reset the ball uh, so that gets reset to the top probably don't need that but um, it's just just in there at the moment and we do the same checks for the right cup. Yeah, so I think that... Oh yeah, there's um, obviously changed the text string uh, from levels to time. And that's it. That's all the changes. So I've got the basis of something a bit more interesting than I had before. Um, really, I need to... Oh, I need to turn that thing off again. So... Where was that? Now, the, interestingly, the code's getting quite long. So I think what I need to do is separate some of the code so I can have different files. So I'm not looking at one big source code. As you develop games, source codes can get very large. and It's best to be very organised. Otherwise, you're scrolling up and down looking for one line of code and you're not too sure. Uh, obviously, we can do a search. So a search wall. Um that one's all right we need the other one. Ah, oh, there we are so that's why the balls weren't going off the bottom of the screen like so now they're back into the action so that's where i've got to so far i need to really zone in now on um, better gameplay i think the levels will be maybe 10 different levels and each level you can play at any time and it's the speed in which you can clear the balls um, the quickest and that'll be essentially the game I don't want it to become something that's going to take months and months we need to get the game finished and then we can look at how we publish the game so thanks for watching see you next time